So the first step with a carbon project is what we call discovery. And that's uh, where we go through with you over a number of months looking at uh, <clears throat> doing a mapping, what's involved, uh, who's involved, what's it take, what are you going to get out of it, who pays you, when do you get paid, all of those issues uh, get written down and, and sort of discovered, if you like, from your perspective. So we start with discovery, That's, that costs $5,000, and then we go from there. At the end of that, then you've got to make a decision, do you want to move forward with a carbon project, is it viable, or is it something you're just going to flick now because it's too much trouble or whatever, but at least then you have the information on which to make a, a solid decision. Um, so the process then let's assume they're going forward and uh, you're registered with the government. We're then ready to baseline you. So from the time you decide to talk to us to the time you get ready to baseline is probably going to take at least six months. It can take the government three months alone just to register it. Um, so it's not something that you're going to ring up and we'll be out there baselining next week. It doesn't actually happen like that. Um, so the process that we go through then for baselining is uh, stratification, the soil sampling analysis, etc. And I'll take you through that quickly. So this is stratification, a property that we did a couple of months ago. And our, using uh, aerial photography, LIDAR, um, gamma taken from an aircraft, uh, and a whole lot of different satellite imagery components. Uh, we try and look at where's the variation in your landscape. And uh, at the moment, we're really not sure which, which of these variants are going to correlate with carbon. But by the middle of next year, we should have a much better idea. So we're breaking it up into those groups and also including fence lines. So there'd be fence lines around where a lot of these boundaries are here. So then sample on these types, um, the different colours, basically they represent a different soil type. So on that particular property, there's 25 variations that we've picked out. That's about a, a 3,000 hectare place. Uh, <clears throat> and so then we design a sampling system around that stratification. And it's a computer design system, uh, which gives us random points at which we have to go then and find in the paddock. Uh, so they head out then with this machine, uh, and this is what takes the cores, and the cores come out intact and cased in plastic, and they're uh, they're a meter and a half high, with, uh, most of them. Sometimes we do 1.2 meters, but uh, if you've got shallow soils, uh, we'll only go as far as we can go. So when you hit bedrock or clay, that's where it pulls up. Uh, so then we take those cores and put them through this machine here which has a couple of instruments on it uh, that scans those cores and you can see that that's operating in the paddock. Now that scanning then uh, determines the bulk density in the core and also the carbon um, in each five centimetre component of the core. So it gives us a very, very accurate estimate of where the carbon is in the soil and what its concentration is. So when it comes out the other end it looks a little bit like that. So you can see every one of those dots is a measurement of both bulk density and carbon. And uh, <clears throat> then from that we can work out <clears throat> the yield of carbon per hectare and tonnes per hectare, down to whatever depth uh, we've gone down to. The new technology we're playing around with is this. This is um, a CAT scan of the soil. And what the importance of this is that it enables us to electronically sieve out rocks and roots. So when we can do that, uh, the whole sampling gets more accurate again uh, because we don't want to be counting organic matter, we're really chasing organic carbon. So when David talked there before about organic matter at 3%, um, organic carbon, which is what we're measuring here and what you're going to trade on, is about just over half organic matter. So if you've got 3% organic matter, you've got about 1.6, 1.7% organic carbon in your soil. So what we're chasing is organic carbon. Um, and we need to be able to remove the rocks and account for that and remove all the big roots because that's organic matter and that all has to be excluded. So this technology uh, will allow us to do that. It's 
a few years away from getting in the paddock, that one. Um, so then we have to calculate what's the soil organic carbon across the paddock. So we take into account all those variants across the paddock, that original map, plus what we find at depth, and then are able to work out how much carbon there is in tonnes of carbon per hectare. So this is one property that we did. It's um, three and a half thousand hectares. And uh, you can see that at different layers, we know how much carbon is there, tonnes of carbon per hectare. Now, traditionally, carbon's been measured down to 30 centimetres. And you'll see there's 24 tonnes to 30 centimetres. But when we go down to a metre, there's actually 55 tonnes. So there's more carbon down here than there is in the top bit. Uh, and so we need to be measuring at depth. Um, and pretty well everywhere we've sampled so far, we've found more carbon at depth than there is up in the top because that's where it can get out. Uh, and, and if we can store it deep, then it can't get out and we've got long-term stable carbon in the system. But we need to be measuring it down there. And when I showed you before in the cotton industry there, they're sequestering carbon below 30 centimetres in the 30 to 60 centimetre band is where the carbon's actually building up in the soil under irrigated cotton. Um, the methodology has 35 pages of those equations in it. Those equations help you work out how to convert everything into CO2 because I, so far both David and I have been talking about carbon, which is organic carbon, but this is what makes it work for you. So one tonne of soil organic carbon equals 3.67 tonnes of carbon dioxide. What you sell is carbon dioxide. There's your missing link. So you're selling carbon dioxide, not carbon. But what you add to your soil is carbon. All right? So there's a whole lot of maths involved then in for us to convert um, from carbon to carbon dioxide because we have to take into account your livestock, any fertiliser that you've used, um, all sorts of things because there's, there's uh, carbon goes into a system and there's carbon goes out and we have to balance all of those things up. Um, you then uh, have to be audited before you can sell. So we do two measurements, the first one, the second one, and then to be able to sell the credits, the auditor says how many credits you've actually got for sale. Uh, then you list them on basically like a share register and there that identifies there's your credits back to your property tells the buyer that they're soil carbon credits they've been verified by who they've been verified by etc etc um, so once they're audited and verified then you're ready to uh, put them on the market once we've done the baseline um, we'll do an initial audit to make sure um, that we haven't missed anything because we don't want to get five years down the track and find out we needed that piece of information up there five years ago which we can't now get. So um, we do a preliminary audit, um, then we remeasure, then you get your, your credits, uh, register them and then you sell your credits. Um, so that's a process that, that takes a little while um, to happen. And it's quite involved. Um, and there's lots of rules, uh, a lot of paperwork involved in it and basically we help you through a lot of that 